You're listening to another life-transforming message from Awakened Church with campuses in San Diego and Salt Lake City. To find out more about us, go to awakenchurch.com. I've got a word. Um, I got a word for you guys tonight. I've got a word from heaven for this place tonight. And my goal, I'm a a sales guy too, like Dr. Matt. I'm a sales guy. So I'm always thinking as I'm developing a message, hey, what's the end result that I want to see come out of my time on stage? Okay, how can I sell these people on that goal? And so the goal for tonight, my goal, is that you would all leave here, we would all leave here with a fresh level of excitement, purpose and wonder related to this life of following Jesus. Anybody, are you guys in for that with me tonight? This is also, uh, this is also Vision Builders Night. Can I get just, I'm sorry, this is like the diva worship person in me. Can I get a little more fallback, please, Paul? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Of course, John Day, of course you did. Of course you asked for that. This is Vision Builders Month, and um, I'm so honored. You know, our life, like Dr. Matt and Pastor Michaela said, Lauren and I's life, is, is sowed into the kingdom. And that's time, that's money, that's resources. And if there's anything that we've seen over the past 15 years, it's multiplication on that seed. Um, and so tonight is Vision Builders, and it's all going to tie in. So let me start with my first scripture. Psalm 35 verse 27 says this, and just so everyone knows and feels a level of comfort as I begin to preach, we've got Pastor Samuel Duth. He's in the front row. He checks all of my theology. He makes sure that it's sound. There's nothing crazy going on. Isn't that, isn't that right, Pastor Samuel? That's correct. That's correct. All right. Psalm 30. Yeah, no, no extra verses. Psalm 35, 20, not that I'm planning on. Psalm 35, 27 says this. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. How many of you know that in order to build the kingdom, we need some people to prosper? Amen. In order to do this vision builders, kingdom builders, change the world, flip the world upside down thing that we're all called to do together, we need to prosper. This verse, though, stood out to me recently uh, like it hadn't before. A couple things. The obvious one, the word prosperity, the Hebrew word, means welfare, health, prosperity, and peace. Is there anybody in here that would like to have some more welfare health, prosperity, and peace in their life. Show of hands. Anybody want some more? Okay, good. Me too. The second thing that stood out is this idea of God having pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And as I'm thinking about that, I'm like, okay, that's nice. Like, that's nice, God, that you, that makes you happy or you have pleasure when I prosper. But to me, that didn't really come across as like an activated word. Like to me, like I wanted to say something more like, like who, who makes his servant prosper. You know what I mean? Like not got it. It doesn't just make you happy. And you're like, oh, that's so great that John and Lauren are prospering. Like, like I'm glad that you're happy about that, Lord. But like, like, is there something else to that? So I, I thought about this, and, and, and this scripture changes that whole scripture for me. So my next scripture, Isaiah 46, verses 9 through 10, says this, if you don't mind pulling that out. It says, remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. We believe that. Verse 10, if you don't mind. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. And here's the good part. And I will do all my pleasure. I like that better. I like that a lot better. So what's that saying is that if there's something that makes God happy, if there's something he likes, he's going to do it. He's going to make it happen. It's not just saying, it's not just saying he has pleasure in the prosperity. It's saying, yeah, he's saying that he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, but he's saying, I will do all my pleasure. So that's really good news. For you and for I. Yeah, yeah, it's good. But that's not my point. This isn't my point. 
The third, the third thing that stood out, great warm-up. Thank you, Dr. Matt. <laughs> is this, and, and this is where it's going to get you. Are you ready? Yeah. Is it says, if we can go back to uh, Psalm 35, Gabe, verse 27. Something that stood out that hadn't before is it says this. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant? I've always taken this scripture as a blanket statement for every Christian. And even talking to one of my friends recently, and I was saying, hey, I'm thinking about preaching on this scripture. And he says, yeah, but doesn't it say, I'm like the scripture that says he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And he goes, well, but yeah, but doesn't that scripture say has, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his people? And he's like, check the translations. And so we check a few translations, and it, it's all servant. It's all servant. But I think most of us that have heard that scripture would just say, that just applies to every Christian. That just applies to his people. But that's not what it says. It says, God, let him be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So he's going to make prosperity happen for his servant. So the question that I have, and what's what I would say then, not all Christians are his servant. Just because, just because you said a prayer of salvation, you said, Jesus, take me to heaven. Thank you for the free ride. That does not make you his servant. You like that. I like it because that's like kind of hard preaching, but I'm glad that you like that. That's why this church is amazing. And Pastor Matt and Dr. Pa Dr. Michaela, whoa, hey, prophetic, prophetic. I see a reversal. I see, no. I'm sorry. So then the question I have is, are you a servant? How do you know? Felt like the Holy Spirit then led me to this next section of scripture. I'm a big Bible guy, so you're going to have to bear with me. We're going to read some Bible. Because that's the rock you can, just, you can risk everything on. You risk it all on, the word of God. Deuteronomy verse, chapter 15, verse 12 through 17, I'm going to read you a story. If your brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year, you shall let them go, him go free from you. And when you send him away free from you, you shall not let him go away empty-handed. You shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, and from your wine press. For what the Lord your God has blessed you with, you shall give to him. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. And this is my point where it gets good. And if it happens, see, that's the thing is becoming a servant and not just a Christian, it's really an if it happens. If it happens, if you make the decision, if you make the choice, if you put a stake in the ground and saying, I'm taking this thing next level. If it happens that he says to you, I will not go away from you because he loves you and your house since he prospers with you, then you shall take an all and thrust it through his ear to the door and he shall be your servant forever. Also to your female servant, you shall do likewise. The title of my message tonight is All In. Let's pray. That's creative. Let's pray. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray tonight that my words would be your words. God, even right now, I see you shifting hearts, shifting mindsets. God, opening our lives. Father, taking our level of trust and belief in the great plans you have for us to the next level. God, let this land, Father, in a real, radical, life-transforming transfer, transforming way. Amen. You know what I mean, Jesus. You know my heart. All right. 
There's three things that stood out to me in this story, and I'm going to give you my points, actually four. I'm going to give you my points right off the bat. My points are the house, the ear, the all, and the door. The house, the ear, the all, the door. Those are my four points. So let's start with the house. So in the story, the master would take the servant to the door and he would pierce his ear. So the master would use the house to mark someone as a servant. The master would use the house to mark someone as a servant. I believe that God does the same thing today. He uses his house to mark us as servants. How does he do that? He does that through leaders. He does that through other people. He does that through being in community. He does that through opportunities. He does that through challenges, being offended, and disagreements. Lauren and I have been here for almost 16 years now, and I can tell you that many times in those almost 16, we'll just call it 15 years, we have been offended. There's been opportunity to be offended. We've had disagreements. There's been people that we did not like. Nobody here tonight. But there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of opportunity for us to have said, you know what? That was fun year one. That was fun. It's been a great five years. It's been a great decade. It's been a great 12 years. But we knew that God had called us here and we wanted to submit our lives and allow ourselves to be marked by the house as a servant. And again, the reason for this, the reason for this, it, it, again, it's not because it's the right thing to do. Going back to Psalm 35, 27, God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So I want to make sure that I'm considered a servant of God so that he can have pleasure in my prosperity and not only have pleasure, but because he does all his pleasure, he's going to make it happen for me. So that's why, that's why, that's why. I'm telling you, I consider myself a pretty good worship leader. I do. I've been doing it a long time. I better be good at it or I've wasted 24 years of my life. But in this house, I've had correction with my worship leading. I've had people say, hey, that was too much. Don't do that again. You talk too much. I've had people do all sorts of different things, which is opportunity for me to have just said, you know what? I don't need this. You don't pay me. Why would I stay here? But I wanted to be marked by the house. I wanted to be marked by the house. I wanted to be marked as a servant of God. Hey! Wow! I don't have a lot of tattoos. Just this one on my ankle that Joe Roberts says is kind of girly. But I'm telling you. But I'm telling you, my spirit, my soul has been tattooed by this house with my decision and Lauren's decision to serve Jesus. This last year, Dr. Matt, he asked me to lead an eMERGE team. Listen, my eMERGE experience up until this last year was sitting in a trailer with the rest of the worship team, eating Sour Patch Kids and wearing onesies. So this was a big stretch. And I told him no initially. I told him no initially. Because I was like, I'm going to be busy with worship. And I'm going to be in a onesie. And that's, I don't know if my team will respect me. <laughs> but thank God for an amazingly beautiful wife here on the front row. And a ridiculously great pastor who challenged me and said, okay. You know, I thought that you would, it'd be good for you. I thought it'd be like a next level thing for you. But hey, it's your, your decision. And then listening to the Holy Spirit going, you know what? I'm going to do it. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be I'm gonna be a team leader. I'm going to be an emerge captain. I'm going to go for it. I'm, I, I don't necessarily see the why, but I'm going to trust that the mark that's going to come from this is going to take me to a new place. Just, was it today or yesterday, Lauren, that I applied for the Pathfinders internship? Yesterday. I didn't want to do that either. Don't tell them they haven't accepted me yet. So don't, don't tell them that I just said that. But listen, my dream, my, dream, my dream is music. My dream is worship. My dream is ministry, doing exactly what I'm doing now, traveling. I never wanted to be a business guy. So being in a place where it feels like, for me, I'm kind of like, Jesus, let me just pray a lot and sing to you a lot and, and just make this business thing happen for me, God, so I can focus on the things that I love. But recognizing, you know what, there's some weak spots, some blind spots in my area related to this thing, God, that you've called me to do. And so I'm going, again, to submit to the process, allow myself to be marked by the house, which is going to turn me into a servant and I'm going to prosper. So anyways... The second thing is the ear. Why the ear? Why the ear? Listen to this. The, the only thing that you need to be a servant is a listening ear. And then a willingness to obey what you hear. The only thing you need to be a servant is a listening ear and the willingness to obey. They took him to the door. They used the house. They marked the ear. The mark of his servant was a hole in the ear. So what are you listening to? Ask yourself that. What voices am I listening to? Am I listening to my own inner voice? My, that says what I want to do and what's comfortable and safe? Am I listening to, who am I listening to? The testimony of my life is essentially this, listen and obey. I'm not remotely the smartest person, the most talented person, but when I was 17, 16 years old and I got saved on a beach, I was in a very bad place. And I said, God, if you can get me out of here, I'll give you my life and I'll serve you. And from that moment on, that's been the testimony of my life, is listen and obey. And I've done it quite imperfectly, for sure. Um, you know, haven't gotten it all right, but I'd say on the big things, I've done what I believe God has asked me to do. Awesome. Would have started with moving to San Diego in 2002 from Seattle. Felt God calling me from a great church up there to come down here and serve a much smaller church. Listening came with joining C3. Joining C3 in 2005, 2006. Joining, joining this house of C3, if you don't know. Awaken was C3. C3 San Diego is now Awaken. But that was a moment where... <clears throat> Listen, you, you, you've, if you want to be a servant, you've, you've got to just stop making all your own decisions. I, I was at this other church, and my girlfriend at the time, my wife, uh, felt like it was time for her to move on from this particular church. But I didn't feel like God had told me it was my time to leave yet. And so because church life was so important to us, she left. We were falling in love. I didn't feel like I could leave. We both felt ministry was our path, so we didn't see how it could function being at two separate churches, so we broke up. We broke up because I didn't feel like God had told me that I could leave yet. Thank God a couple months later, I felt in a prayer meeting that he said, hey, if you want to go to C3 and hang out with those crazy Aussies, then be released to do it. And like the next day, I was like, I'm in. I'm coming over. Let's get back together. But again, 
that was a moment where it wasn't just me saying, I'm gonna do what's comfortable. I'm gonna do what's convenient and what I want to do. Career decisions, starting my company, which Dr. Matt mentioned, and ultimate, not ultimately, like this is the end. And now moving to Utah. The only reason, the only reason that Lauren and I are moving to Utah is because we believe God told us to. And that was confirmed with pastors and leadership and friends and circum. The only reason we're moving, the mark of a servant, the mark of a servant is a listening ear. And you want to be a servant because God prospers his servants. And he takes pleasure in it. And if he takes pleasure in something, then he makes it happen. I'm just, this is a sales guy in me, right? I'm just saying what I said. I'm saying what I said. Okay. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Come on, Jimmy. Lay it down. Jimmy Lick, one of the most anointed keyboard players on the planet. So the next thing is the all, and I feel um, like the Holy Spirit is on this. Do, you, do we have a picture of that all, Gabe? So that's, a, that's what an all looks like. Old school. I heard someone say old school. Yeah. Yeah, ow. So they would take... So there was this person, man or woman, and they'd been serving this house for a while. And the time came where they could let him go free. And they would, and they would come to the master and they would say, I actually don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave you. I've been so blessed here. I don't want to leave. So the master would take him to the door of the house. He'd take one of these. He put his ear against the door and he would thrust the awl through the ear into the door and that would be the mark of the servant. I had actually ordered an awl and I forgot it somehow and I believe it was just the mercy of God because I was actually going to ask uh, Pastor Samuel to come on stage for a live demonstration. <laughs> So you're you're off you're off the hook, man. Just barely. But you know what? Like check this out. And we're going to we're going to land this plane. Your reaction when you saw that, you can put it back up there, Gabe. Please. I heard a lot of people say ow. Ow. And when you're looking at the concept of obedience to God, of being marked by the house, of allowing leadership to speak into your life, of actually submitting yourself. You go, but submitting myself, that means I have to trust people. Well, yes, but at the end of the day, do you believe that the people that are in your life are just there by accident? Or do you believe that God brought them into your life? And if you believe that the people in your life are there because God brought, God brought them into your life, then it has nothing to do with trusting people. It has everything to do with trusting God. The all looks scary. And, and the process, again, I was going to have Pastor Samuel demonstrate so you could see it, but I have to imagine it was painful. And there probably would have been a little bit of blood. And when we look out at the idea of being marked by the house, being marked as the servant, having our ear pierced, that can look pretty scary. And you can avoid it because that's human nature, right, Dr. Matt? We run towards pleasure. We avoid pain. 
And especially if you've maybe done this before, you've been in a house, you've allowed yourself to be marked. You put your ear on the door, you allowed someone to pierce it, and it, it didn't go well for you. It didn't go well. Looking at that prospect again, it can be like, yeah, no thanks. Like, like this far and no further kind of a thing. Yeah, thank you for what you do. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be here, but there's too much history. There's too much pain. So this is how we're gonna transition into altar right now. If everyone can close their eyes. Here's the call. If you would say tonight that you've been hurt, you've been disappointed by the house and it's caused you to be gun shy, all shy. Doesn't have to be this house, but if you would say that that resonates with you, there's been a wound, there was a time where you allowed your ear to be pierced, you allowed yourself to be marked and, it, and, and for whatever reason it went south and there is a hesitancy, there is a fear, there is a lack of trust, and it's basically an arm's distance thing, that you're right now living in that arm's distance with leadership, with opportunities, with other people, with everybody's eyes closed, everybody's eyes closed. I just want you just to signal heaven with just a raising of your hand. Just signal heaven with a raising of your hand. Thank you, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. All right, you can put your hand down. Jesus, right now, I know, God, you told me that you wanted to heal people tonight. And I don't believe that was physical. I believe it was this thing right here in their spirit, in their heart. So, Father, right now, as the worship team plays, Lord, as your spirit drops in this moment, I just speak a healing oil, a healing oil right now. Lord, I see you just beginning to rearrange puzzle pieces in people's hearts, in people's spirits. Just keep it mellow, guys, please. Beginning to rearrange puzzle pieces, beginning to shift things. Holy Spirit, you're so gentle. Holy Spirit, you're so good. You're so real. And the word for you tonight is this is not that. This is not that. And God, I pray right now for a courage to just infuse people's spirit, soul, and body, a courage, God, to step to, over that line, God, to say, Lord, to the master of the house, I, I don't wanna go anywhere. I'm not gonna go anywhere. I don't wanna leave. I'm willing to take and put my ear to the door and have it be pierced again. Second call. If there's something you know God has asked you to do and you have not done it for whatever reason, but you know God has asked you to do this and you would say tonight, I wanna have my ear pierced. I want that mark of a servant because I wanna prosper. I want you just to put your hand in the air, every eye closed. You know there's something God has asked you to do. It could have been 10 years ago. It could have been 10 minutes ago. You know there's something he's asked you to do and you have not done. I want you to put your hand high in the air and I actually want you to hold it there. I want you to keep it there. Jesus, right now, God, again, I speak courage into every single life with their hand lifted up tonight. God, courage right now, Holy Spirit, as your presence falls. Lord, your word says that the servant wanted to stay in your house because they loved you so much, because they prospered so much with you. Father, for every life right now, I speak courage, courage to take that step, courage to make that call, courage to quit that relationship, courage to do that thing, courage to give that money, courage to, to move to that. But God, whatever it may be, I speak courage tonight, courage in the name of Jesus. Jesus, into every spirit, into every life in the name of Jesus. Come on. Awesome. All right. Last call. If you want tonight to be marked by the house, 
have your ear pierced at the door. In other words, you want to live a life committed to hearing from heaven and obeying what God tells you to do. I want you to just stand to your feet. You want to live that life pierced at the door, marked at the door. Come on. Come on. I want everyone here that just stood. Come on. I want you just to put your hands in the air and I want you to begin to just tell Jesus. Just begin to tell him. Tell him that you're, you're his forever. The servant would come to the master. Come on, team. Let's go ahead. And just stay with me. Raise the energy up a little bit. Begin to tell him, I'm yours forever. I'm yours forever. The servant would come to the master and say, I'm yours forever. I don't want to go anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I've been so blessed. You've been so good. You've done so much. Where else could I go? What else could I do? Come on, begin to tell them with your own words. Begin to tell them with your own voice. I'm yours. I'm here. Come hell. Come high water. God, I'm with you. I want to hear your voice. I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to trust your word. I'm going to trust in your life. In the name of Jesus, why don't we give God a mighty shout of praise tonight. Amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.